What does math have to do with technology and why does it matter? Cathy O'Neill, a PhD data scientist with an in-depth knowledge of algorithms and technology, has tried to provide an answer to this question with her book, Weapons of Math Destruction, and show how these systems influence our day-by-day -day lives. The author starts the book by putting emphasis on the big data economy and how this new scenario has welcomed more use of math. In the last 10 years, math-powered applications have propagated. However, these advanced systems are based on choices made by fallible human beings. As a result, while some of the choices are made with the best intentions, many of these models encode human prejudice, misunderstanding, and bias into the software systems. To describe and classify these models in a simple but exhaustive way, Cathy uses a specific term, Weapon of Math Destruction, or WMD in short. Throughout several examples, from a teacher evaluation to a sentencing scoring system, she focuses on three elements that recurrently affect a potential positive impact of WMD. Opacity, scale, and damage. Let's start with opacity. Some of these systems are like black boxes, not clear, transparent, or frequently updated. Individuals affected by the algorithms are usually kept in the dark. For example, imagine the criteria that are used in the automatic screening system every time we apply for a job. Moving to the second point, scale, it basically means the capacity of a system to grow exponentially and impact other parts of your life. The book explains that the biased and opaque data from one system can easily funnel right into another model and crystallize into a single risk score. For example, a poor person is more likely to have a bad credit score and living in high crime neighborhoods surrounded by other poor people. Some WMDs will recommend police to maintain more control on these areas while other models will exclude them from job opportunities or raise their car loans. And finally, damage, which translates into negative, harmful effects for many, by stopping them from having opportunities without a clear reason or opportunity to disagree. When these elements are in place, WMD defines its own reality and uses it to justify its own results. In other words, a probability generated by the system that a certain person might be a bad hire, a terrorist, or a miserable teacher is automatically distilled into a score which is used to evaluate our life and behavior in the society, like into a downward spiral. Why does it happen? Well, a WMD often faces a choice between fairness and efficacy. While our legal system leans strongly towards fairness, from an engineer perspective, the value of fairness is an inconvenience or a constraint to be perfectly efficient. WMD tends to favor efficiency. Essentially, it feeds on data that can be measured and counted. In this context, fairness would result hard to quantify. It is a human abstract concept, and computers still struggle with concepts. Also, Developers don't know how to code for it, so fairness is usually not calculated into the WMD world. Dismantling a WMD doesn't always offer such obvious payoff. While more fairness and justice would of course benefit society as a whole, for the entire industries, such as for-profit universities and payday loans, WMDs appear to be highly effective. Most of the affected individuals by this software think about it differently, but they lack economic power, access to lawyers, or political organizations to fight these battles properly. And the result is a distortion of our society through a massive growth of unfairness. So what can we do about it? The author proposes a bilateral approach. On one hand, the process should begin with the modelers themselves, like doctors, a data scientist should pledge a Hippocratic oath, one that focuses on the possible misuses and misinterpretations of their models. 
they need to reevaluate success metrics in terms of profit and efficiency and impose human values on these systems. On the other hand, we should spread the word about WMDs. Once people recognize them and understand their statistical flows, they demand evaluations and audits fairer. The first step before digging into the software code is to carry out research. We should begin by treating the WMD as a black box that takes in data and splits out conclusions. By studying these outputs, we combine together the assumptions behind the model and score them for failness. We offer compares such mathematical models to the engines of our digital economy. These audits can shed lights on their internal parts and see how they work. This is a critical step to provide these powerful engines with proper steering wheels and brakes. Many of these models are launched with the best intentions, but they must also deliver transparency, disclosing the input data they are using, as well as the results of their targeting, and be open to audits. The book ends with a consideration that predictive models will not go away and are instead increasingly deployed to run our institutions and manage our lives. These models are constructed not just from data, but from the choices we make about which data to pay attention to and which to leave out. Those choices are not just about logistics, profit and efficiencies. They should be fundamentally moral. At the end of the day, mathematical models should remain our tools, not becoming our masters. I hope you learned one thing or two from this summary. Please subscribe if you want to support this channel and leave a comment to say which video you want to see next.